holographic self-similarity follows in the magnetic model, but what magnetism is is most definitely what people do not understand. As was said long ago by Faraday, magnetism is the dielectric field. Dielectricity is the inertia. The loss of that inertia manifests itself in a geometric form pattern, but that form pattern is not three-dimensional. It is resultantly, and demonstrably so, three-dimensional in that it has volume, but magnetism itself is two-dimensional. It is only resultantly three-dimensional and contains and creates volume. It is not voluminous, but it is by definition that which creates volume by nature of the mass which it much tr must transverse. Here we can actually see the hypertrochoidal pattern that you actually find underneath the ferrocell as evidenced here from one of my videos and here as you can see a thousand times over the quote-unquote spirograph like, spirograph like pattern that uh, forms the construct what these are are constructive and destructive interferences is commonly found in the double slit experiment but unfortunately modern science being the bullshit that it is it uh, thinks that light is both uh, particle and wave, but it is neither particle nor is it a wave. A wave is not a thing, rather what something does. And certainly so, there's no such thing as a photon that is misunderstanding the coaxial nature of light, which a longitudinal pulse perturbation with resultant transverse electrical magnetic components necess necessitatively so resultant to its propagation. But the propagation is in the field itself. Nothing is propagating in the sense of an object moving from point A to point B, but these are constructive and destructive interferences of the resultant divergent centrifugal magnetism interacting with the increasing inertia and acceleration of the centrifugal. But the centrifugal is not magnetism per se, not specifically denotatively, but we can say that it is so superficially so. This is the confusion of the misunderstanding by everybody in the world as to the conjugate nature and the relationship of magnetism to dielectricity. We can't say that the head side of a coin is something completely different than the tail side of the coin. Obviously they both entail the coin. Or actually, specifically would be the case, the head and the tail would be the magnetism, but the silver of which the coin is made would be the dielectricity. You uh, certainly do not uh, have the magnetism without the dielectricity or the dielectric silver as, we, as if we were in that analogy. Let's take a look at the central toroid, we'll actually see here a two-dimensional model. Here we have a three-dimensional representation. This conjugate geometry, if we actually take the inverse of the toroid, we have the hourglass pattern of the hyperboloid, which forms the conjugate nature with the toroidal, the creation of not space and volume itself, but magnetism and space and volume are synonymous. The loss of that inertia as manifest three-dimensionally only results in two, the necessary mass which it must transverse and which resultantly is the therefore rise of phase and is uh, therefore the result is rise resultantly of voluminous geomagnetic precession. We actually have to understand two-dimensional geometry. We have to understand what the hypertrochoidal is. We also have to understand what geomagnetic precession is. We can actually do, or you can do specifically, a lookup on what geomagnetic precession is. And specifically, two-dimensional Poincaré disk model of projective geometry, which necessitatively spells out the nature of a two-dimensional model as projected in three-dimensional uh, geometry. Now let's actually show that with a really, really simple program here. Here you can actually see the pattern of the uh, ferro cell on this uh, simple two-dimensional uh, pattern which uh, will draw out in 360 degrees a circle. Well, you don't see a circle here. You see a top-down view of the torus, obviously so. And here we have it underneath the ferro cell of constructive and destructive interference. And of course we have the black spot where no constructive or destructive interference is occurring. We have the top part of the hyperboloid or the top of the hourglass if you were showing the uh, field geometry of increasing inertia and acceleration, i.e. the dielectric. The two of these together are the conjugate, which uh, define one another. The dielectric uh, defines the magnetic, and the magnetic defines the uh, field geometry of, uh, the, uh, of the dielectric. So let's uh, erase this and start over. And here's where we'll have to understand, and you'll have to research, 
what it is the Poincaré disk model of projective geometry. And all I'm going to do, I need to find the center to do this. All I'm going to do is draw a circle as best I can. Only a circle, but it will be manifest in replication in 360 degrees opposite to where I'm drawing it and also in 90 degrees and uh, 45 degrees and so on. I think with uh, 18 uh, manifestations, but all I'm doing is drawing a simple circle. But here we have, and let's do it again, except try to be more perfect since I'm doing this by hand. Here we have the hypertrochoidal pattern, which shows the magnetic circle. The only way the loss of inertia manifests itself is the manifestation of a circle. It's a two-dimensional circle. But magnetism is three-dimensional, or is the creation of three-dimensional space. But this is necessitatively only due and resultant to the mass that it is three-dimensional. Magnetism itself, if we were to take a point of inertia, which is certainly so a nonsensical term, since there is no point, uh, inertia itself is non-Cartesian. It is, by definition, counterspace and the true definition of what energy is. But if we were to take a single point and uh, apply the, uh, the loss of that inertia, which follows... Uh, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, we will see what we have is actually just a two-dimensional circle where the loss of pure potential is cartesianally manifest in a circle and replicated here in fullness. You'll actually see we actually have what appears to be a three-dimensional top-down torus. And this, of course, is what we see in the ferro cell. Magnetism is two-dimensional. Inertia, the loss of that inertia, and this of course is perfectly in line with the holographic model of the nature of the universe. Uh -huh. Magnetism is only three-dimensional resultant to the nature of the mass by which it must, if coherent, reciprocate itself to termination. Really it is an expanding circle. Not Nothing is moving like my cursor is currently. Moving outwards as you see my cursor is moving. We actually have Technically, I could draw this uh, same uh, two-dimensional geometry by showing an increasing circle going from an infinitesimally small uh, point, well, actually be a counterpoint in counter space, to a larger and larger and larger and larger and larger circle. So that would actually be, according to the geometry of the nature of magnetism, the way in which I would, quote, draw the loss of inertia would be an increasing circle instead of a point moving out and then moving back again, kind of like a comet going around the sun. It would just be an increasing circle and then a decreasing one. Upon termination, nothing is uh, emitted by the loss of that inertia from counter space, but saying from implies a, a Cartesian coordinate, but counter space has no point by which we may define from. So we would actually have to imagine this as an expanding circle and then a contracting one and then apply our understanding of geomagnetic precession because the loss of inertia and polarity is uh, is only denotatively the inverse of counter space there's obviously no such thing as a monopole but polarity two-dimensionally is not a north pole and a south pole a magnet doesn't have poles it has the inverse of counter space the uh, the loss of that inertia is manifest, obviously so, three-dimensionally resultant to the mass of which it is present therein, i.e. the ma coherent magnetic field. So we not only have the divergence and the phase, but we have the geomagnetic precession, which draws out, if you will, for lack of a better term, this toroidal, because the inverse image of this torus is the uh, hyperboloid. Uh, the uh, hourglass that is the negative image of a torus. The inverse of an hourglass is a torus, and the inverse of a torus is the hyperboloid. These form the geometry of force and motion and the inverse geometry that, to that inertia and acceleration. Everything begins with inertia and acceleration within which we actually have a rate of decay of loss of inertia which therefore manifests itself resultantly as the uh, hypertrochoidal two-dimensional or the magnetic field, but magnetism is not something different from dielectricity. Magnetism is just the manifestation of dielectricity. I kind of drew that really crooked. Magnetism is the manifestation of dielectricity as resultant to the loss of its energy, which is counter space, is pure potential, is pure energy, pure non-Cartesian uh, 
uh, actuality. This is uh, true power is rest, not manifestation of power. One might think ignorantly, as any human would, being would, that power would be an atomic bomb going off, for example. Well, that's true power. The true power, one might think. But uh, obviously, it's just the inverse of that, magnetism being analogous to the explosion itself. But that is impotency. The release of that power, the release of that energy is force in motion. It is the absolute loss of true power. True power would be that uh, three-pound lump of plutonium that sits in your hand like an innocent baseball. I mean, that is true power. That is uh, about the closest analogy I could draw. I kind of drew that crooked there. Let's draw. It's hard to draw a perfect circle freehand like this on a computer screen to get the hypertrochoidal pattern, but I, I think you get it now. So, anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, just click the link below. Anything to expand your mind. But this is the secret of Mother Nature, the conjugate nature of magnetism and dielectricity. Both are inextricably connected at the very core one man magnetism is not something different than dielectricity magnetism would what we'd be calling uh would what we would uh denotatively and ignorantly call force but it's uh, not force it is simply the loss of inertia that we understand to be dielectricity or the counter spatial pure energy of the nature of the universe its manifestation being force in motion we therefore call it something else even though it is not something else we call it magnetism but there is not an autonomous uh, field modality known as magnetism it is uh, simply a uh, an expression of the loss of the potential of dielectricity which must only and necessitatively form the geometry which we call magnetism which is the creation of space and volume and force and motion all of these are one and the same thing that's the power as manifest but not the power and true which is completely unmanifest necessitatively and logically so